Hey, they're here. We've been waiting for you. Now we can get started. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Tuesday, March 19th. Now, as you're probably already familiar with, what I like to do here is share a hot penny stock with you. I'm a day trader, and that's all I basically trade are penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. There is no shortage of penny stocks. And I am constantly keeping my eye open for stocks that have potential to make us money. And I found a very hot stock. This is LICY Lie Cycle Holdings. This is a lithium ion battery recycling company that is established here in the US and in the EU. Well, her chart is ripping right now. It started all on the 12th when she had news come out about a private investor giving them some big money. Well, that got it jumping over the next two days 150%. The next two days, she was climbing just ever so slowly, and then news on the 18th came out about the Department of Energy giving them a lot of money, and that put it into high gear, and she took off and did almost 200% over the last two days. Since the 12th, she's gone up over 400%. Now, what I really like about this company is her longevity. Yeah, the chart's hot right now. We're probably going to get some run out of it. But think about this. The EV market is in its infancy stage right now. And this company is already in business. They've been in business since 2019. They are pulling in revenues because there are lithium ion batteries that need to be processed. No, we don't have a lot of cars out there. But some of these batteries are damaged. Some cars get into accidents. Well, you got to get those batteries out of circulation. And you can't just pile them up somewhere. You can't take them to the landfill. They've got to be processed. And we know that's where we're going. These lithium ion battery processors are going to pop up everywhere in the world. And this company has got a lot going on early in the game. So, LICY finished the day at $1.38, and she was up almost 26% today. This is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. Penny stocks on the major exchange come with a lot of benefits, folks. First off, they're free to trade. Down on the OTC, you got to pay to buy your shares. You got to pay to sell your shares. You never do that on the major exchange. Plus, we get to trade pre-market, after-market. Folks, you got to pay attention to the pre-market at least. There are some huge runs pre-market. And then, of course, you've got all that extra money, all that extra volume up on the major exchange. And that's what you really need if you want your stock to run. But to eliminate the risk, you want all that oversight you get on the major exchange. Down on the OTC, there's a lot of BS because there's not as much oversight down there. So personally, I like to trade these penny stocks on the major exchange. So, what is this company all about? Well, let's dive into some information and find out. Jumping into the most recent news press to get this description. LiCycle is a leading global lithium-ion battery resource recovery recycling company. Established in 2016. I thought it was 2019. And with major customers and partners around the world, LiCycle's mission is to recover critical battery-grade materials to create a domestic, closed-loop battery supply chain for clean energy future. We are going to have lithium mines pulling this lithium out and processing it. But at the same time, we're going to have a pile of lithium carbonate all ready to use from processed batteries. This will be a new resource for lithium carbonate. They go on to tell us the company leverages its innovative, sustainable, and patent-protected spoke and hub technologies to recycle all different types of lithium-ion batteries. At our spokes, the spokes are your satellite facilities on the outskirts of your primary hub facility. All the spokes do the pre-processing and send their materials to the final processing to the hub. At our spokes, our pre-processing facilities, we recycle battery manufacturing scrap and end-of-life batteries to produce black mass, a powder-like substance which contains a number of valuable metals, including lithium, nickel, and cobalt. At our future hubs, our post-processing facilities, we plan to process black mass to produce critical battery-grade materials, including lithium carbonate, for lithium-ion battery supply chain. Now, jumping on over to their website, we get a list here of their existing spokes and hubs. 
It looks like they've got about seven spokes and two hubs right now. We have multiple operational spokes and plan to develop hubs in North America and Europe. Our Generation 3 spoke utilizes patented technology to, to directly process full EV battery packs without discharging or dismantling them. Really? I'd like to see that technology. Lifecycle's planned hub refining and recovery facilities are expected to produce recycled battery-grade lithium carbonate and process more than 100,000 tons of black mass per year at full capacity. Now, these are the spokes and hubs they currently have. We have their Arizona spoke. This one was put into operation in May of 2022. We've got one in Alabama. This one was put into operation October of 2022. As I said, they're not just in the U.S., they are also over in the EU. They've got a spoke over there in Germany that was started in August of 2023. Then we have their very first spoke they ever built in the United States back in 2020. This is in Rochester, New York, which is also where their flagship facility is, the Rochester Hub. This is where all the spokes in North America are going to be sending their pre-processed materials to. Then we have a hub over in Europe, in Italy. This is the Porto Visa Me. <laughs> I know I throw that up. This is the hub over in Italy that's going to take care of all their spokes in Europe. You've got the one in Germany we just spoke of. They've also got one in France. they got another one in Norway. And the very first one they built was actually up in Ontario. This was in 2019. Now, along with all of this uh, lithium, nickel, and cobalt, there's a lot of metal. Just your everyday average metals, coppers and steel and tins and even silver and gold and stuff like that. And they obviously are going to be recycling all of that too and getting money from that. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh man, look at that explosion. What do we got there? 10, 11, 12, 13, at least 13 times her normal volume, 1,300% times 7.3 million, jumping up to 91 million shares today. Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count is about 176 million. I don't know what the float is. It could be that high, up to 176 million, or it could be all the way down to a million. There was a lot of gap in there, and I don't have any idea what it is, you could go through the financial. It might tell you the float, but normally trying to find the float for these major exchange stocks is impossible. Market cap for Lycycle is about $194 million. Financials for the company. You would think a lithium-ion battery recycling company wouldn't be making any money yet. You wouldn't think that they are actually operational, but they are. The problem is they're not making a profit by a long shot. So over the last four years, they started off at $800,000. We know that's 800,000 because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Jump into 2021 to 7.3 million, huge jump. Then almost doubling it in 2022 to 13.4 million and then kicking that up nicely to 18.3 million. But look, the more she makes, the more she loses. Oh my God, we can't... <laughs> <laughs> Please don't make 25 million next year because we'll be losing about 80 million. This is horrific. Looking at our quarterly reports. What the heck is that? I have no clue. I see two quarterly reports here. You normally don't even get quarterly reports with the major exchange stocks. Uh, back in 2021, it was even money. She pulled in 2,800 and got to keep 2,800. 2022, she made 5.9 million and lost 4.9 million. I mean, lost. That doesn't mean she had a million left over. She lost actually 10.8 million. So she lost everything she earned plus an additional 4.9 million. Ay, ay, ay. Balance sheet for the company. We've got money in the bank, about $80 million. We've got assets, $886 million. And total liabilities is less, just about a half a billion, which means we actually have positive stockholder equity in this company of $376 million when they're losing millions of dollars every year. That is surprising. 
take a look at those disclosures for the company. We've got an 8K here. This correlates to the news that we are going to go to. We've got a Form 4 here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's A common stock, the stock that you and I buy. Now, they can acquire and dispose of these in a lot of different ways. We're primarily interested in them buying them or selling them. I don't see a P or a S underneath the code here. So it's something else, and I'm really not interested if it's something else. So that's really all we got going on here, except, and this is covered in the news as well, this S3 is telling us about a lot of shares they're going to be putting on the market, but it's not just shares. They're putting common shares, preferred shares, debt securities, warrants, rights, and units. I think they call that a shelf offering. A little bit of everything is going out there, and I don't know how much of each one. You can read through that, but there's about 60 pages in that document. All right, let's jump on over to the news now. So, we've got a few pieces of news here. As I said, that first piece of news that got the stock running came out on the 12th. LifeCycle announces a $75 million strategic investment from Glencore. Then we just saw that filing for the shelf uh, offering for $200 million. That means they're going to sell $200 million worth of all those different types of shares so that they have $200 million in their hands. Then we have the most recent piece of news that came out today. Lifecycle provides business update following announcement of the $75 million investment from Glencore. And the biggest piece of information they didn't even put in the headlines here. Now this news press did come out today. There's a lot of information in it, and I'm not going to go through it all. I've just pulled up some bullets that caught my attention, but it would behoove you to read the entire thing. So they tell us here that the company recently announced a $75 million strategic financing from Glencore to enhance their liquidity position and further build on their long-term strategic partnership. At the same time, they are continuing to work closely with the Department of Energy, on the conditional commitment for a loan of up to $375 million. Now, that's not free money. It's not a grant. It is a loan, but it is cash when you need it. So they got $375 million potentially coming from the Department of Energy. They got $75 million that came from Glencore. And don't forget the $200 million they're going to get from their shelf offering. That's a total of $650 million. That's a ton of cash, but they've got a need for it. Turns out they are over budget right now. It was back in October they decided to slow everything down because they went over budget. They initially expected the Rochester hub to cost $508 million. At the end of December of 2023, they were already at $567 million. And now the new revised project is estimated at $960 million. So they need all that money to get this operational. But the money is coming in. Everybody sees the value of what they're doing and the money is pouring in right now. So I like the company right now. The chart is hot. It's kind of looking like a rocket stock. So one might think it's going to fall real hard and fast. And maybe it will. It's possible. Who knows? But beyond that, folks, I see this company as having a very strong future. Don't you? The EV market is in its infancy right now. They are making money, but they're losing money. But even the Department of Energy sees they're worth investing into. Glencore sees they're worth investing into. And from what I understand, Glencore has already invested over $100 million into them. So they keep pouring money into them because this is a promising sector. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Let's do some charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're going to take a look at Lycycle Holdings, ticker L-I-C-Y, and we're looking at a three-year, one-week chart so you have an idea of what this company's been doing over the last few years. What she's been doing is falling. We had a really nice high back in 2021 of November. She was at $14.28, and since then, she has been in a downtrend all this time, hitting a low of $0.35 cents January 15th of this year. Now, for over a year, her volume was pretty consistent, but it wasn't helping that price at all. In October, the volume started to increase and get stronger, but that didn't help the price at all either. 
The last few days, the volume has exploded and finally we've got the price rising. Now, what I really like about this three-year chart are her oscillators. They are impressive, folks. Lots of strength. Our RSI is coming out of the basement. The basement floor is at 30. She was under the basement floor, rocketing all the way up to 48. We've had a positive crossover on our MACD. It is climbing towards the signal line. We got lots of green bars on our signal line, each one getting bigger than the one before. And we've got a perfect setup here between my PPO, percentage price oscillator, and my ADX, which I like to call trend continuation. Whenever you see that blue line climbing, going up, and the red line falling, going down, and the two are separating, getting further and further apart, guaranteed, 100%, your price is climbing. This chart looks really hot to me. Let's come on down to that one hour, six month view. So now we've got a high of $6.16 at the end of July in 2023, and there's our low of 35 cents. Now what I'm gonna do is use my Fibonacci, and I'm gonna poke that low bubble here, and then I'm gonna poke the high bubble. This is gonna give me algorithmic SNRs, supports and resistances. Normally we get our supports and resistances by connecting them to historical price points. Well, these are done with algorithms, and we can trust them. The price will respect them, so we can trade using these. Now watch the price as she's falling through here. She came down through two tiers, tried to get up on top of this one, not enough strength. This 200 is coming down hard. She fell down two more tiers, tried to get on top of that one, couldn't do it. Fell down another two tiers, got up on top of it, was looking strong, was up there for a few days, and then lost it fell down to this bottom tier, hitting this low of 35 cents. Now from here, she really didn't do anything. It looks like she's getting closer to the 200, but she isn't. The 200's getting closer to her. She isn't doing anything but going sideways until the 12th, when that first piece of news came out about the investment from Glencore of 75 million. Then we had a jump. Over the next two days, she went up 150%. Went sideways for a few days, then the news came out on the 18th about the DOE and that $375 million loan, and she went into rocket mode, and she launched another 150%, falling down, hitting onto that nine-day SMA and bouncing back up, and right now she is floating above that nine-day SMA. Now, me, myself, I see the way she lays on this nine-day. She doesn't float, which tells me she's coming back down. She's most likely going to come back down to this nine day SMA, which is currently at about a buck 26, and we're up here at a buck 40. So I would wait to see if this comes down. And if she comes down to this area, that would be my buy zone right in that area. Now, what was really impressive here is that the price and all of the SMAs were underneath the 200 day SMA right here. When the price jumped, Right behind the price, every single SMA, the 20, 50, and the 200 haul, crossed that 200-day SMA, creating golden crosses. Three of them. That gave her the turbo boost to run. And right now, all of those SMAs are nicely combed, going in the right direction, looking strong. Oscillators are looking really good. All of them are pushing up right now, every single one of them. I'm liking the four hour chart as well. And as you can see, compared to the days before, the volume is getting very strong right now. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. She's, see, she was flat here, just going sideways, doing nothing until the news came out on the 12th and she took off. Now it looks to be she was respecting the 50 day SMA here. She bounced off of that, went up and came back down and she's right at her nine day SMA. Again, all of these other SMAs are perfectly lined up. They're in the right positions with the smallest one at the top, the biggest one at the bottom, and they're all climbing. Oscillators, ooh. Well, we did have a pullback in the afternoon and that's what it shows. We had a lot of strength, but every single oscillator right now is pulling back. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Well, that doesn't look bad, does it? We got our low bubble in this corner of 40 cents, high bubble in that corner, which is exactly what you wanna see, ooh, of $1.92. So we have got almost 
500% run in this last week. Definitely over 400%. She has been bouncing off of this 200 all the way up and she is bouncing off of that 200 right now, sitting on top of the 50, which is what she's been doing as she's climbing. This is looking picture perfect to me, folks. Osculators, they say she's in recovery. Look, she's gotten back on top of that pink line, back on top of the signal, and her RSI is a little cool right now. But I'm liking this stock, folks. She's got money coming in from all different directions. 200 million from her shelf offering, 75 million from Glencoe, most likely 375 million from the Department of Energy. Yes, the facility's costing them more, but everybody wants it. It looks like it's pushing forward. And once they get that done, they're just going to keep expanding, folks, because the EV market is growing. We haven't even started to see what an EV world looks like. So I imagine this company is going to be huge in the future. They've already got set up in Europe. They've got set up here in the United States as well as Canada. How big can it get? Whew. That's the guess, isn't it, folks? I like LICY. I think it belongs on your watch list. But of course, folks, do some more due diligence. I didn't cover everything. There may be something that's important to know that I didn't cover. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.